to print or not to print? That is the question. Or the question could be something like, how do we print labels from Airtable using a Dymo label writer? Let's take a look. All right, so we're gonna start things off as we usually do, and that is with a very quick demo. So as you can see, I've got a very simple Airtable database over here, and I've got my little friend. Say hello to my little friend. Okay, so we're just gonna press print label over here, and after a few seconds, we should get a label out of this thing. There we go. Label is ready, and that was for iPhone 15 Pro, and the label clearly says iPhone 15 Pro. Let's see how we can set this whole thing up. And I'm gonna start off with a few quick tips. Let's go. So before we get started, three super quick tips. Tip number one, if you don't have a Dymo printer, just like I have got here, that's fine. This method that I'm gonna show you now works for any printer, thermal, not thermal, uh, laser jet, ink jet. Uh, it even works for scales, like electronic scales, believe it or not. Tip number two, and that is get a bunch of extra labels. You're gonna need them in order to kind of like fine tune the label design to print out correctly. You're gonna burn through a lot, so get extra. Tip number three, and that is if you're on Windows, I am on Windows, uh, pay close attention to the printing preferences page. Printing preferences and go into advanced, and then this particular drop down here was the catalyst to making this right. Now, I tried to follow to the correct label uh, drop down choice, but that didn't really work. I had to test pretty much every single one of these uh, choices until I found the one that works the best for me. And that was 30376. Now, believe it or not, my labels are of a completely different code. They are 11355s. Totally different code, but seems like they print much better when play around with that particular setting. All the other settings are kind of meh. Eh, they don't really work. Or they have a very minimal effect on the design of the label. So yeah, that's it. Let's get started. Now, that's the lane target. That's why I was thinking that if we reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year, December 31st, 2024, I will shave my beard. Yes, I will say bye-bye to my pride and joy. I have a feeling I'm going to this. Anyway, back to the video. All right, as we usually do, we're going to start things off with the Airtable database. Now, I am not really using anything special here. I just have a very simple table where I have like an item ID, the owner, the brand, of the model uh, obviously this is almost like you know the phones that a company gives out to their employees so to speak and maybe you want to stick a label on your device so that you know what is it so you can scan the qr code very quickly uh and we're going to get into all of this but generally speaking there's not much going on in terms of the database i've got a name field i've got an item id field that looks like this simple text simple drop down the model uh, the checkbox trigger thing that we use all day every day on this channel and then we have our label printing status which prints the log of activities the log of things that happened for our peace of mind and then we also have another simple text called stencil id we're going to cover what this does but yeah, that's it in terms of the design of the database. Now let's move on to setting up our printer and stencil. All right, so it's time to set up our printer and it couldn't be easier. So I'm using a Dymo Label Writer 450. So naturally I headed off to uh, Dymo.com, downloaded the drivers and made sure that my printer was inside of my list of printers and scanners in windows just like so so that was step number one the next thing that you need to do is you need to sign up for a service called printnode.com there we go this is a web page sign up and once you've logged in you will see a page like this one now it's important to take note of your api key it's located over here, so jump in there, make a note of your API key. In other words, you probably have to create it if this is your first time. But yeah, jump in there to get your API key so that we can set up the connection later and make.com, right? Yes, right. 
The final thing that we need to do is we need to actually install PrintNode on our machine. How can you do that? Jump into downloads and I'm on Windows. I just download this executable file, download it, install it, and you will need to open this up in the tray like I have got here. It will look something like this. Use the same username and password to log in, just like I've done here. Select the printers that you want print node to see. In my case, it's just the Dymo Labor Writer uh, printer. That's it. Now, let's head on to Stencil and see how things work there. Okay, time to set up Stencil. And what Stencil is, it's the service that actually generates our little PDF because print node needs a PDF of the label in order to print it, obviously. I mean, there's probably more complicated ways to do this, but this is my favorite way by far. And Stencil, generally speaking, is quite inexpensive for what it is. Uh, it's super easy to set up. So once you're ready, just sign up uh, for uh, Stencil. And once you've logged in, feel free to actually create a new project. Now, once you do create a new project, you kind of have to give it a uh, name and all of that. I've already created a project and within your project, you need to create a template. I've already created mine, but the most important thing that you need to note is the width and height of your label. Now, my labels are approximately five centimeters by one centimeter. No, what is it? I don't remember but it's about five by something. So I converted that into pixels. You can use ChatGPT or something like that. And it was approximately so by so. I probably made a few adjustments along the way, but ultimately this is it. Now, from here, once you've set this up, you can start dragging and dropping elements like a QR code. And I've already set up my own, but you need to make sure that you note these little uh, unique identifiers for uh, each thing that you're uh, dropping in uh, to the system. For instance, a QR, my QR code is called QR code underscore one. Then I have uh, this little text that is bold, that is text two. And this text that is not bold is text three. Once you've set this up, don't forget to press save template. Now. I'm going to save it and I'm going to go back to templates. It's really important to note that your API key for stencil goes based on the project. So jump into settings and you should see your API token over here. Make a note of this API token. We're going to need this later on when we set up make.com. All right. So make.com, this is the end game. This is where all of the stuff that we just talked about converges and actually happens. So essentially we have two scenarios. Well, technically we have one scenario, uh, but it's split into two parts. The first part basically deals with the case of where we never generated a label before or where we're just simply reprinting. So what you saw here in my demo, I was reprinting a label and that typically takes few seconds like maybe two three seconds if there is uh the need to print a brand new label that you've never printed before you've never generated it before the scenario will take this path over here essentially the way that it works is that we simply send the request to stencil to generate that label design first and then the scenario part two waits to receive that design and it can take uh, between one or two seconds between the design is generated by stencil and finally we know via webhook that this design is basically ready to go and stencil is kind enough to let us know let's take a look at uh scenario number one part one essentially so first and foremost we get our request from Airtable the way that we usually do, right? We have our trigger field, we have our automation set up uh, in the way that we like, and typically uh, it works this way where our trigger is uh, labeled printed checked where it matches conditions, right? That condition. And then we update that record, and this is just me being a little bit fancy here. I'm basically saying starting up so that the user knows that I'm doing something at that point. And once I've let the user know, I run my 
classic uh, script that looks exactly like this. Feel free to copy this and just replace this webhook URL with the webhook URL that you get from module number six, or technically your first module in the automation. Uh, don't use mine, use the one that make gives you like here, right? Uh, copy this address and just basically paste it in here, replace mine with yours. Don't forget to also add an input variable, just like I've done here. Same capitalization, everything is the same. And don't forget to map your Airtable record ID value by pressing this little blue cross button and selecting the Airtable record ID. Um, that's it. Once you're done, press finish editing, turn this on. Don't forget to turn on the automation. How many times have I forgotten? It's unreal. And that's it data. We've done the first bit. Now, moving on to the next part, we simply get that record that uh, we received from the webhook so that we kind of know what's going on behind the scenes. Now, immediately right after that, we have a little router that has got two paths. The first path is, of course, never generated before. And we determine that by the stencil ID not existing. Basically, this part here is blank. If it is blank, that means that we've never generated that label in the past and we need to. So if that's the case, we go ahead and we create a, create a PDF, make an API call um, module for Stencil. If you haven't created a connection for this before, just press add, copy the API key that you uh, that I showed you from a stencil. You need to do this just once, just the first time to create the initial connection to stencil. Uh, but yeah, that's basically that. Then we have uh, the URL that looks like so. Method is post. And this is the most important bit. So here you need to copy this whole thing exactly as I've written it down. And here are the things that you need to replace. First and foremost, you need to create this little metadata thing here, just like I've done. And just make sure that you map uh, Airtable record ID from numbers, number seven. Simple, this part, this thing here. From there, you need to copy the template ID. And we can fetch that from our uh, template in stencil and I'm looking at it and it's this particular part over here. This one uh, ends in 7B7D, 7B7D. That's our template ID. Modifications, and this is where the fun begins. Remember where I pointed out that you need to pay attention to the little IDs of the fields within stencil? Well, this is where it comes into play. So I've just selected the QR code and you see here, I've got QR code one. That's exactly what I'm writing here. And then the value for it is my uh, item ID from Airtable, essentially this little code here, that little license plate, so to speak, for the record. Text two, I'm combining the model, a space dash space and the brand. Text three is just the name of the record, this thing, and that's it. If you need to add more to your label, well, first of all, make sure that you've got the um, the little placeholders inside of your template. That's number one. Number two, once you've added and saved that template, then you need to add that uh, little uh, key value pair inside of this uh, JSON structure, so to speak. Don't forget to separate your items by a comma but don't add the comma at the very last one. That needs to be comma less, just like this one. Now from there, the next thing is to, of course, update our Airtable instance. And as you can see, I'm using my record ID from module number seven. I'm saying that I'm generating the label uh, and printing the label status from past. And the most important bit is I'm printing the ID from module number four because I will be able to reprint this much easier the next time that I want to reprint that label. Now, in the case that we are simply reprinting, it's very simple. Again, our stencil ID needs to exist this time around, which it does the first time you run it, it will print a, a stencil record ID in there, in Airtable. And here, I just simply need to do another API call to Stencil. And this time around, 
it's this URL. You see how I'm replacing the stencil ID here? Make sure you do that too. From there, the rest of it is basically as is. The method is get and we leave the rest as is. From there, we send a quick little um, print job to print node. And this is the first time we're looking at a print node uh, module in this video. So don't forget to create a connection if you haven't got a connection already. Uh, just make sure that you copy that API key that you created in print node, like I showed you before. Uh, make sure that you select the right computer, the right printer. Over here where it says content, content type, just select PDF URI, map in the PDF URL that you get from Stencil. That's basically it. The rest, just make sure that there is a quantity title. You don't really need a title there, but yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, rotation degrees don't really matter. None of this seems to have any effect from my testing at least. And that's it. Press OK. Once you're done, make sure that you update the user to say, hey, printing complete. And of course, we're printing the label uh, status from before. And that's it for the first step. Now, let's take a look at the second part, this little path over here, the never generated before path. So at this point, when we're creating that PDF, we're essentially sending that package of information that we saw with the ID of the label and the name and all of that to Stencil. This little setting, if I go back to templates, over here in my label, you can edit the Integromat integration. So make.com used to be called Integromat. So click on this thing and over here where it says webhook trigger, just make sure that you paste the webhook address that you got from here. So from part two, first module is of course the webhook. Make sure that you copy this address and paste it into Stencil, press save, you're done. Now, Stencil will let us know that, hey, I've finished designing your label, here it is. And this is literally what happens. We listen to Stencil. Once it's done, we do exactly the same thing with print node like I've shown you in step one, we'd simply print it. And of course we choose PDF URI and PDF URL from the response that we get from Stencil. Finally, we just need to update Airtable to say, hey, printing complete. How do we do that? We fetch the metadata field of ATID. Remember how we created it here? And we passed the ID, the record ID of Airtable inside of ATID. And this is why, basically. When we get that response from um, Stencil, we want to locate that Airtable record very quickly. So here we go. Um, I'm just fetching my item, mapping that ATID in the record ID field. And finally, I'm just updating uh, the user by saying, hey, printing complete, done and done. That's it. That's all there is to it. So that's basically it. Now, you might say, Alex, you make this look so easy. I do. But you have to kind of persevere with this little project. There's no very clear path because there's so many different types of printers, so many different sizes of labels. So you have to kind of, you know, hack it a little bit. And, and if you stick to the tips that I gave you in the beginning, you should be A-OK. -okay. Just to let you know, it took me about 35 attempts to get this whole thing to print a very decent label, like, this one. This took about 35 attempts. It was very satisfying. As soon as I managed to get the basic drop down choice right, I only just had to make small adjustments in my template, like making my QR code slightly smaller or move it slightly to the left or to the right. That's all I had to do in order to achieve a nearly perfect label. And I suggest you do the same. That's it from me. Let me know down in the comments below if you've got any questions. I'm gonna try and answer as much as possible. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.